Finally, we got a dedicated 3D modeling app for the iPad. It is Venus 3D, and this is a quick overview of the app. First, to navigate in the viewport, use one finger to orbit around the object, two fingers to pan, and pinch to zoom. Right now, we are in the mesh selection. Tap once on the object to select, tap once in empty space to deselect. Speaking of selection, there is three types of them. Face selection, edge selection, and vertex selection. All can be accessed from the top left corner. Beneath them, you will find the select tool, the move tool, the rotate tool, and the scale tool. And in the corner, we have the gallery button. In the bottom left corner, we have drag and rectangular selection tools. Use them to select multiple objects or vertices. If you choose the drag selection, simply drag your finger in all the objects or vertices you want to select. If you choose rectangular selection, dragging your finger will create rectangular selection shape. In the corner we have the scene outliner. You can lock objects with the lock icon and hide objects with the eye icon. Also you can rename objects by double tab on the name and access more options by holding the object name. These color icons change how the new selections behave. The yellow will create a new selection. The green will add to the selection. The red will subtract from the selection. And the blue will intersect the selection, which I have no idea how to use it. Next we have the undo and redo buttons. And the green plus button is where you can add objects to the scene. There is a lot of primitives and interesting objects you can choose from. In the corner we have the inspector where you can find the transform shading and materials. Then you get the command button which give you a list of tools most likely you will need it based on your selection. Then you get the export button where you can render images and export your object in different format. On the top right corner we have focus and reset camera buttons. Then we have the app settings and on the left of the settings we have the rendering options. From left to right we have the fuse, wireframe, x-ray, PPR and ray tracing. In the middle we have the global and local orientations. For example when you rotate an object, you will notice that the gizmo is facing different direction. That's because we are in the global orientation. To fix it, simply select the local orientation and the gizmo will face the same direction as the object. Now, to demonstrate the three types of pivots, select two objects and try to rotate them. The active component pivot we rotate the two objects around the active object. The individual origins. We rotate each object on itself.
And finally, the centroid pivot, which can rotate the two objects around the middle point between them. We still got a lot of tools to discover. Let's give the cylinder a light color for the next part of the tutorial. If you switch to the paste selection, a new set of tools will be available on the left and the right side of the canvas. Let's focus on the left side for now. The first one is the extrude tool. Select the face you want to extrude and move the blue icon up. Each time you release and move again, a new face will be extruded. Then we have the inset tool. The poke tool. And the crease tool. Now switch to edge selection and the new tools will show up on the side too. We have extrude and crease just like the face selection but also we have the bevel and the loop cut. To use the loop cut, tap on the place you want to insert the loop cut Use the arrows to position it, then tap on the scissor icon to apply it. Now switch to the vertex selection. Which only have the beveling tool on the left. Now for the right side tools, first switch to the mesh selection, let's see what we have. First we have the delete tool, which is in this case gonna delete the whole mesh, soften and harden normals. Next we have repair mesh, smooth tool, and center pivot. For example, if you move all the vertices, And back to mesh selection, you will find out that the pivot didn't change its location. To fix this, select center pivot. After that, we have apply transform, the duplicate tool, and the measurement tool. After that, we have the mirror and the subdivision with the fires. Each one has its own setting. And finally, we have the clear selection. We have collapse face, delete face, and book face. After that, we have extrude. and create submesh, which create a group of the selection faces 
I'd can have their old material. Also, you can add more faces to the submesh by selecting new faces and use the add faces to submesh tool. If you want to delete the submesh, select it from the outliner and keep holding on the submesh to reveal this video, then select dissolve. Next we have softened and hardened faces, separate faces, and duplicate faces. After that, we have the mirror and subdivision modifiers. Next, clear selection, select shell, grow and shrink selection. And there is two more hidden tools which are extremely useful. Duplicate the cube and move it to the side. Select the two cubes and the first hidden tool will appear, the combined mesh tool. Let's go to the face selection and select a face from each cube to reveal the second hidden tool which is the bridge tool as for the edge selection tools We have collapse edge, we have dissolve edge, and delete edge. Soften and harden edges. And split edge tool. The rest is the same as the face selection tools. Finally, for the vertex selection. We have dissolve vertex, delete vertex, and if you select two vertices, you will see the insert edge and merge vertices. And this is all for today's tutorial.